Hey you guys, uh, welcome back to Pins and Whiskey. Uh, since I split this video into two parts, I didn't want to just reuse the first one, so uh, this is it. <laughs> so they have two enclosures, and one uh, is hosting two female gerbils. Her names are Cinnamon Toast Crunch and Cocoa Pub. Like this cereal, so just super cute. I like those things. <laughs> and the smaller enclosure houses their male gerbil and solitary for reasons I'm not, they didn't list the reasons on why so i'm not going the previous thing i said will still be my voice of that situation but uh sometimes there are cases where they just need to be solitary so I'm not gonna go over the whole speech again and sometimes I envy the different colors because all my journals look the same. I can't tell them apart though. So the wheel looks very large. I like that. They have a lot of enrichment. The bedding is a variety of hay and uh, paper. Lots of things to chew on. Again, I don't know how you guys are doing uh, black spray displays my gerbils always go for this it amazes me that they exist there and the smaller enclosure looks amazing they have a whole sand bath and a wheel and everything in platforms and i'm not sure how often you have to clean their sand bath and their wheel but if the gerbil i'm guessing since it's one gerbil i guess they're not as destructive in that case so it works for you not to have a cage chopper or divider. And that's pretty cool. So this next one is Ronnie and Reggie. They're males and they're brothers. This is the enclosure and it looks like you don't have a wheel. <laughs> and so right off the bat, I'm going to say what I've said in the previous ones. Get a wheel. It's important. Uh, make sure it's not too thin of a plastic if you're going to go for a plastic one because some gerbils are known to chew right through them and it's bad for you and for them. Now I noticed the bedding is paper, lots of shredded paper. I would recommend having something like Aspen because those wood shavings are safe and they also help to be able to make their substrate sturdy so they can properly burrow. Gerbils love burrowing. It's very important for them. In the wild, they have a lot of different areas that are designated for very specific things. So it's very important for them to still be able to do that because it's part of their nature and it keeps them from getting bored or frustrated or just even sick, biting, all of those things. Other than that, uh, everything looks fine. I would just recommend having something to mix into the paper bedding that you're using just so they can hold burrows and be able to create their tunnel system. This next one is from Stephanie and, uh, or Melanated Pets. And I love her. I love her to death. I'm sorry, I'm a little biased here. <laughs> okay, but I promise I'm going to keep the enclosure advice just as I would anyone else. So, here we go. It's a video again. So. Hey, Shine. I actually have three gerbil enclosures to show you. So, we will start with Cupcake and Apothic. So this is Cupcake and Apothic's enclosure. There's Cupcake. It is a 55 gallon. Over here, we have a ton of different hides in the bedding. And we have some a hide here, bridges, all these fun things. There's Apothic right there. Water bottle, dig box, wheel, all that fun stuff. So this is Cupcake and Apothic. This is Bailey and Guinness, aka the twins. One of them is currently out, but this is their enclosure, also a 55 gallon. Very similar layout to Cupcake and Apothic. We have their wheel, dig box. Oop, it looks like one of them is in the dig box right now, actually. And then we have a hide, some chala wood, mapani wood, cork, and then a whole bunch of chews. And then some houses also in their bedding. 
This is currently our single durable Artemis' enclosure. As you can tell, he already got bedding in here. But we have a multi-chamber hide in here. We have dig box, some other hides, a platform, his wheel, his sand bath underneath here. And we are looking for a friend from him. But I have yet to find any male gerbils. So this is Artemis and he's in a 29 gallon. <laughs> Okay, so as you guys saw, I didn't even need to explain. Thank you, Stephanie, for that tour. I promise y'all I'm not being biased right now, but I, just like the first two videos, I really don't have any attractive criticism or advice to give you. Uh, the enclosures are incredible. They're spacey, they're large. I love that you put so much enrichment for them and thought about all of the dividing, separating issues that they have. I love that you're going to find Artemis a friend. If it's something that you can do, uh, it's great and that's wonderful. When or if you get Artemis a pal, because gerbils are social, uh, then you would probably need to either get a cage topper or a larger enclosure, but either way, uh, I think you already know that, so yeah, amazing. So this next one doesn't have much detail, so we're just going to jump right into it in the video. I am so impressed with the woodwork going on here. They cut a circle into uh, the divider. Now the wheel works on the bedding side, which is amazing, but still they made the dividers for their CMF and other things. So I love that people use dividers for different reasons. I mean, it doesn't have to be the exact layout that I recommend. It's just for you to be able to make it work for them, uh, make them be able to run on the wheel or use their sand bath and uh, drink water in a water dish or even a bottle. So it's amazing to see this system kind of uh, a little bit different. It's awesome. And I'm glad that it's working for you. Now the video is very short, so if you see it looping, that's why. <laughs> now I do want to advise you to be careful or very mindful of their behavior, especially when they start to become three years old or above that age, because that is when gerbils seem to most likely start declaming. I guess they just menopause <laughs> like women a uh, moment and so access to be able to go through to the other side might be complicated for them in the future uh, with them blocking or fighting to get through it now i myself also have a divider that is a slit uh, however it's a little bit larger so i like that system a lot which uh is I'm guessing you're using it for the same reason. I would just watch out for it being too small and uh, just if they tend to start getting picky with each other even in different places. So just be careful of that. Now the last one that I'm gonna be reacting to hosts two gerbils and their names are Libby and Gabby. I'm not sure what size the enclosure is, but it looks pretty decent and it has a cage topper. I love seeing photos that show the enclosure because uh, with cage toppers, we don't get many of those. I'm reacting to them, uh, but I guess I also haven't been reacting to many. I'm just glad that in this video I get to show one, so thank you for this because it shows you exactly how having a cage topper can help with them needing to have all the things that they require and as much bedding as possible and still be able to use the necessities. So I, I would never recommend wired wheels for gerbils. Their feet can get this thing called a bumble foot. It sounds cute, but it's not. A, it can get their feet really sore and it's really not good for them for their feet to be on those surfaces especially for so long and in this case since they're going to be using it to run they can also get their paws stuck inside of the holes of the wired wheel and their tail 
Their tail is so long, and even though gerbils generally have a good motor skill built into their brain, they, even with age, can just eventually slip up. Or if another gerbil jumps in with them, it can possibly cause chaos. So I would definitely recommend switching their wheels, I plastic or a wooden wheel, because the wire wheels are definitely not safe. So post edit, I also noticed that the cage topper, the flat surface is also wired and I would suggest using like a square or rectangular piece of cardboard, uh, just put it on the ground so that they don't get bumblefoot from that either because it is like walking on rocks in our perspective to them. That, that is it for this video. I know so many of you will want this to continue and I plan to, just not very often. And I can't promise y'all that I'll be making this video very often, but I will try to, uh, especially with new enclosures and new differences we've seen from the previous video. I would consider this one successful. So happy 100th video to you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I got so many submissions. So if you didn't see your enclosure or enclosures in this video, there's always going to be another time. Let's continue watching and waiting for that moment. Thank you guys for all of your submissions. I really enjoyed seeing all the differences and ideas that you guys have when you're making your enclosures. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!